time evolution, of a free particle wave packet. So suppose you know psi of x and 0. Suppose you know psi of x and 0. So what do you do next? if you want to calculate psi of x and t? Well, the first step, step one, is calculate phi of k. So you have phi of k is equal 1 over square root of 2 pi integral dx psi of x 0 e to the minus i k x. So you must do this integral. Step two. Step two. With this, Now rewrite and say that psi of x0 is 1 over square root of 2 pi dk e to the, no, I'm sorry, phi of k e to the i kx. So that has achieved a rewriting of psi of x and 0, which was an arbitrary function, as a superposition of plane waves. Uh, step 3 is the most fun step of all. Step 3, you look at this and then you say, well, I know now what psi of x and t is. Evolving this is as easy as doing nothing. What I must do here is 1 over square root of 2 pi. Just copy this, this decay. Phi of k e to the i k x. And I put here minus omega of k t. And I remind you that h bar omega of k is the energy, and it's equal to h squared k squared over 2m. This is our free particle. And I claim that just by writing this, I've solved the Schrodinger equation, and I've time-devolved everything. The answer is there. I, I didn't have to solve the differential equation or that's it. That's the answer. Claim this is the answer. And uh, the reason is uh, important. If you come equipped with a Schrodinger equation, uh, what should you check? That i h bar d psi dt is equal to h psi, which is minus h squared over 2m d second dx squared psi. Well, you can act with i h d d t and on this thing. And you remember, all that happens is that it all concentrates on this thing. And it solves this because it's a plane wave. So this thing, this psi of x and t, solves the Schrodinger equation. It's a superposition of plane waves, each of which solves the free Schrodinger equation. So we also mentioned that since the Schrodinger equation is first order in time, if you know the wave function at one time and you solve it, you get the wave function at any time. So here is a solution that is a, a solution of the Schrodinger equations. 
but at time equals zero, this is zero, and it reduces to psi of x and zero. So it has the right condition. Not only solves the Schrodinger equation, but it reduces to the right thing. So it is the answer. And uh, we could say we could say that there's a step four, which is uh, step four would be do the k integral. And sometimes it's possible. You see, uh, in here, once you have this phi of k, maybe you can just look at it and say, oh, yeah, I can do this k integral and get psi of x and 0, recover what I know. Uh, I know how to do. This integral is a little harder <coughs> because k appears a little more complicated. But, uh, but it has the whole answer to the problem. I think one should definitely focus on this and appreciate that with zero effort and Fourier's theorem, you're managing to solve the propagation of any initial wave function for all times. So uh, there will be an exercise in the homework. Uh, which is called evolving the free Gaussian. Gaussian. So you take a psi a of x and time equals 0 to be e to the minus x squared over 4a squared over 2 pi to the 1 quarter. That's for normalization square root of a. And so what is this? This is a psi, that is a Gaussian, and the uncertainty is roughly a. Is that right? Delta x is about a, because that controls the width of the Gaussian. And now you have a Gaussian that you have to evolve. And what's, it, what's going to happen with it? This Gaussian, as written, doesn't have, doesn't represent a moving Gaussian. Uh, to be a moving Gaussian, you would like to see maybe things of the form e to the i p x that represent waves with momentum. So I don't see anything like that in this wave function. So this must be a Gaussian that is just sitting here. And what is it going to do in time? Well, it's presumably going to spread out. So the width is going to change in time. There's going to be a time in which the shape changes. Will it be similar to what you have here? Yes. The, the time will be related, so time for for changes, so there will be some relevant time in this problem that for which the width starts to change, and it will be related to m a squared over h bar. In fact, you will find that with a 2, the formulas look very, very neat. Uh, and uh, that's the relevant time for the formation of the Gaussian. So you will do those four steps. They're all doable for Gaussians. And um, you'll find the Fourier transform, which is another Gaussian. Then you will put the right things and then try to do the integral back. Uh, the answer is a bit messy for psi but not messy for psi squared, which is what uh, we typically ask you to find.